All right, it is 6.30. We'll call the meeting to order, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome, everyone. Roll call, Mr. Lumberg. Oh, um, yes. Odie? Yes. Saxer? Yes. Scott? Yes. Bell? Yes. All right. Uh, if there are no changes that need to be made to the agenda, I would entertain a motion to approve that as presented. So moved. Second. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. No conflict of interest disclosure or waiver requests this evening. It takes us to the approval of our minutes from the regular meetings that we had on February 13th and 27th. If there are no questions or concerns, I would entertain a motion to approve those as presented. So moved. Second. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Community input? I don't think we have any community input this evening. That takes us to our next item, financial items, bills and claims. Mr. Lumberg. Okay. I'd entertain any questions this board members had on the listing of bills and claims. I had a couple noted. Uh, page 5, GNR controls. It's a final payment on a secondary boiler in the middle school that we installed this past year. Total cost of that project was 171000 Page 6, Gilhaugen Construction, just under a million dollar payment this month. Brings the total to 6156000 of of 8.8 .8 million total. About 70% complete there. Uh, I guess I did East or T12 quarterly payments to T12 solutions this month is for a total of 212,000 for all of our various programs. Total bills and claims 1,698,824. Any questions Pay vouchers are a total of $62,903. Food service bills, 164,312. Any questions for Mr. Lumberg on the bills and claims this evening? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve those. Second. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Financial report, Mr. Lumberg. Okay, and the cash report for the month of uh, February, $12.1 million coming in to the month, $4,272,000 of receipts, and $4,695,000 of expenditures, left $11,671,000 at the end of February. $8.1 million was in the general fund, $2.6 million in the capital outlay fund. 868000 in the bond, special education fund, 15000 in the bond fund, and $78,000 in the enterprise fund. The receipts of $4,272,000 follow. Itemized detail of the receipts. $2 million worth of investments. The payroll and benefits summary follows for the month of February, $2.5 million payroll. The next uh, financial reports, the first two pages are the <clears throat> revenue for the district, keeping with the theme of uh, talking a little bit about the budget each financial board meeting. I uh, earmarked uh, credit card charges this month to kind of talk to the board about. We run, <clears throat> there's $1,650,000 that's run through uh, credit card payments into the district of that total majority of it is food service, $1.4 million. But we do have uh, quite a number of other bus passes, $125,000, laptop insurance is $50,000, activity tickets, $13,000, driver's ed, $70,000 of payments that run through the credit card. <clears throat> the fees that are charged on that credit card are about 3%, which amount to $50,000, and we charge the patrons to to charge $2.95, I think it is, or is it $2.95 uh, per transaction? So we receipt just under 50000 just about cover the 
expense of the fees on that. On the revenue report, I did have just two items noted in the middle of the general fund there, middle of the page. State apportionment, a budget of 400000 a receipt of 327900 Uh so that's 72000 under budget. And then right below that, the bank franchise tax, which I talked about during the uh, sometime five-year plan. There you go. Thank you. Budget at 950000 came in at a million fifty thousand. so that's 100000 over. Those two basically wash each other out, just knowing that. In the revenue side of things, on the expenditure side of things, the general fund, <clears throat> We're two-thirds of the way through the fiscal year. The general fund is at 65.79% of the budget spent. That's 1.4% below where we were last year. I'm projecting it to be 0.8 tenths of 1% below budget. So it'll be just under 1% below budget, which is not insignificant when it's $37 million. Capital outlay fund is 61% expended. Special education is 62% expended for the year. Bond redemption fund is 94.8% expended. The food service financial statement, statement shows a loss of just under 90,000 versus a planned budgeted loss of 260,000. I think that'll be a little bit better than that by year end. We had uh, those supply chain funds of 90,000 come in this year, so I think we'll have more on the line of about $175,000 loss in the food service fund. Trust and agency accounts, $270,130 amounts held for others. Any questions this evening for Mr. Lumberg on the financial report? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the financial report as presented, please. So moved. Second. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And thank you very much, Mr. Lumberg. That takes us to our general business <coughs> section. First, administration reports, administrative center, Superintendent Larson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. A few items to update the board on here uh, this evening. Um, in terms of uh, the Navigator Pipeline, uh, we continue to monitor. Uh, we do have party status. We are obtaining and receiving all of the respective communications that an individual that has party status would. Um, we, again, remain neutral and continue to monitor. I would note that when we were at Brandon Day at the legislature, uh, one of our stops was um, with a PUC member who just basically uh, explained uh, their role in the process and the way that their quasi-judiciary uh, role works. Um, so anyway, that was uh, certainly relevant and uh, something that we appreciated uh, the city lining up. Um, they did a very nice job of explaining that, uh, that process and the way in which they operate. Did not speak to that, that at all in terms of details or any of those things as they're not permitted to. However, we're able, they were able to speak to the process and the way in which they conduct their business. Um, so it was very good, very informative. Uh, superintendent evaluation uh, will be conducted here uh, this evening. Uh, budget process, so we are now uh, moving into that respective process. Um, you'll note that we have uh, new staffing positions for next year on this agenda, and I'll certainly speak to that here when we get to that item. Um, but I am doing that in two parts, and I will reference why um, when we get into that agenda item, but uh, critical that we get moving on our recruitment and hiring process for uh, some of those new positions. Uh, preliminary capital outlay budget uh, will be presented and uh, approved here at the next meeting uh, in March. Again, that's a very important thing that we do uh, to um, work through the procurement processes for all those really big projects that we have to bid, et cetera. And then that step in the process allows us to do more or less depending on how those uh, respective numbers come back. Uh, in May, you'll receive the preliminary budget presentation, and then in July, we will hold our annual budget hearing and potential action in coordination with the annual meeting. 
uh, tentative negotiations timeline and wage recommendation. As you can see here, uh, myself and Mr. Lundberg will meet with the uh, Brandon Valley Education Association on March 20th. Uh, we will have a pre-negotiations meeting with um, Member Saxer and um, Chair Ullum as they work on the, the Personnel Welfare Committee on the 23rd. And then at our March 27th Board of Education meeting, we will meet an executive session uh, for negotiations preparations. And then our first scheduled meeting with the Brandon Valley Education Association is March 29th. Uh, and then tentatively look to um, ratify the master contract at the April 11th meeting, as well as include classified wage recommendations and administrative salary recommendations at that time as well. Leads me right into the legislative update. Uh, the big ticket item that I would note is that a 7.1% increase to K-12 public education uh, came out of appropriations and passed, and it's now um, awaiting Governor Nome's signature. Uh, I would note that veto day, I believe, is on March 27th. So um, again, our timeline allows us, to, when we meet for negotiations on the 29th, we will know what exact data we, it is that we are working with. So um, we will await to see uh, the results of that respective process. Uh, March 31st, in service is uh, coming together. Again, Hamish Brewer will be, uh, will be speaking to all of our staff, um, different sessions for classified and certified. Uh, and then classified staff will participate in that as well as two separate training, uh, breakout trainings um, within our March 31st in service. So they'll be with us for a half a day. Um, one of the breakouts is on AED training and hands-only CPR, and the other is on school safety. So uh, those are the breakout sessions in, in addition to um, Hamish Brewer. And then certified staff will participate um, with, uh, with the speaker as well as our collaborative learning communities um, throughout the day. Uh, school board election, we have one three-year term. April 11th is the earliest date to circulate a petition. May 12th is the deadline for uh, filing said petition. Candidates must file that finan financial interest statement uh, within 15 days of filing the nominating petition. The school board election is held on June 20th. If you have any questions, please see the business office. Uh, academic calendar, uh, we are in the midst parent-teacher conferences. So tonight we have intermediate school and middle school parent-teacher conferences going on. Uh, tomorrow is high school and elementary parent-teacher conferences. And then we have no school on Friday, uh, March 7th, and that is for uh, the comp day associated with said conferences. Uh, Friday, March 31st, no school for in-service. We will have an early dismissal on Thursday, April 6th, and no school on Friday, April 7th, or Monday, April 10th for spring break. Moving into the high school edition, no uh, change in terms of schedule, priorities, or uh, general information. Um, shot of the exterior area A, so that's again the, the, south, the southern portion of, uh, of that edition that adjoins to uh, the respective library. Shot of exterior area B um, would note that the windows and whatnot will start uh, will start to be installed in that respective area. And then our exterior area C, uh, the um, structural steel and the decking, uh, obviously in place, and now they're working through the process of uh, putting the sheathing on that respective um, area. It actually looks even different now than it did uh, when we took the picture last week. So uh, they continue to make good progress in that area. Uh, in area A, would note that you're looking at a classroom. Uh, there is painting going on. Uh, the ceiling grid is uh, going in. And then uh, we have the rough-ins in progress. So that's getting close to usable, uh, obviously, flooring and and uh, casework and some of those respective items, but uh, it is progressing in area A nicely. Again, area A here, you can see that, uh, uh, that they've got it painted, the ceiling grid is going in, and again, the various rough-ins. 
This is actually in the hallway. Um, so this is the area A clear story. And ultimately what we did is we bumped the elevation of that roof up to allow natural light into that respective hallway. So that's just a shot of, uh, of that clear story. Area A, girls' restroom. Again, uh, ceiling going in, paint going on. Area A, science lab. Again, very similar, very similar status in terms of ceiling grid, rough-ins going in in progress. The other science lab same basic condition. Uh, area B, so here you can see um, what we have going on is interior construction in progress. Ultimately what has to happen is the windows have to go in so that we can get that sealed up and then the sheetrock uh, insulation and those other items will, uh, will progress behind that. Area B, electrical room. Then our area C, our exterior. Uh, Madam Chair, with that, I would certainly entertain any questions you might have. Any questions for anyone tonight? More, more of a comment. Uh, the board seat up for re election is mine, so I'll just answer the question that it is mine. Uh, and at this time, I do plan on sending out a petition. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Larson. Mr. Lumberg, anything additional tonight? No. Nope. All right. High school, Mr. Schleckaway? No, thank you. Mrs. Moore or Mr. Paula? All right. Uh, middle school, I'm betting there at conferences. Uh, and intermediate school, uh, Mrs. Otime? Um, anything from the elementary schools? No, thank you. Mrs. Nelson, anything tonight? And Mr. Henschel or Mr. Frecking, anything tonight? All right, no board policy. So that takes us to general business. Uh, consent approval, I would entertain a motion to approve items one through four, please. Mm -hmm. Second. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Personnel, item number one, to approve the request for general fund additional staffing, part one, for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Uh, I think you have a motion. Motion. Now what do I do? <laughs> Wait for somebody to second it? <laughs> All right. Can we have discussion now? You can if you want. I, I, I think we better. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, what we have here is a partial request. And when I say a partial request, it's a million bucks. And uh, that million dollars ultimately is outlined uh, within the document that was provided to the board in their packet. Uh, two high school teachers, an ELA and a science teacher, a middle school math teacher, two intermediate school core teachers, um, and then ultimately moving over all of those ESSER funds that we have previously talked about. So the four class size reduction teachers, the three school counselors, uh, school nurse, and then the middle school EA for tier two behavior. Uh, there's approximately $305,000 remaining or what would be the balance that I will bring forward in part two. Uh, the biggest reason for this process was um, number one, wanted to get those positions out, advertise, so we have the ability to recruit and do internal transfers and all the things we need to do in a t as timely a manner as possible with those respective positions. And then the second piece is uh, currently in the process of sorting out kindergarten screening numbers as well as some section size things within our elementary schools uh, because if we're able to be efficient within ourselves, then we're able to do some more with some other things. So um, really, uh, really waiting to do that portion of it until we get uh, some of those respective numbers processed. So I certainly appreciate the expedited motion and uh, we'll field any questions you may have. So I did... I no, I move fast. Um, anytime that we can 
add more staff to support all that is going on in the district. I am in support of. I know that it's not easy to have the discussions because um, there's even more on the table that we would like to do than what is even here. Um, and that can be difficult when there's different prioritizations, um, not just for what's in the classroom, but also with activities and the arts. Um, so I know there's a lot to put on there. Um, this is what we have right now. Um, I'm in support of it. Um, could we add more? Absolutely. There has to be a point of what we balance what we have and what we can do with what we have. Uh, and we'll continue to look for more as well as also increasing what we hope to do in negotiations with our current staff. Um, and we want to do that with what is wise um, and being responsible. So that is why it was a quick motion because I know there's been a lot of conversations and that has gone on with your administrative staff. And I appreciate all the understanding that has gone into that. And we'll continue to look at the prior prioritization of the request in the subsequent years and continue to move as best we can to navigate those waters. There's no further discussion. We have the motion, we have the second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Item number two, approve request for special education fund additional staffing for the 2023-2024 school year. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Again, would just note that this is a full request. This outlines um, all of the items within the five-year plan for special education. Um, two SPED teachers, three SPED EAs, additional PT and OT therapy services, as well as increased time for the behavior analysis. Um, would certainly uh, entertain any questions that you have. No Here. questions. Move to accept. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Personnel, um, I would entertain a motion to approve items 1 through 19 as presented, please. Second. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Items 20 to 23 are for your, just a review for transfers. Um, communication under central office. There are some building permit applications for your review if you choose to look at those. Under Board of Education, there's a thank you note there for your review if you choose to look at that. And board reports, does anyone have a re uh, board report that they would like to share tonight? Um, just a quick note. I came over here from conferences that were happening at the middle school. Uh, and I know there's today and tomorrow all the staff uh, in preparation for those conferences, but also what is taking place in the next two days. Thank you for all the time that you put forth uh, and meeting with parents and guardians, uh, also students, I also saw them. Um, so thank you for the time that you're putting forth. Um, what I wanted to share with the board, um, specifically over the middle school running into Ms. Ring, um, she obviously isn't here tonight, and we've stated it before, being on the personnel committee, um, the relationship we have with the BBEA. Um, and so she sought me out real quick um, and was sad that she couldn't be in two places at once, but she just wanted to echo again how much she appreciates the um, relationship from her point of view. Um, and just, again, just wanted to say that that doesn't happen everywhere. And um, seeing how much she invests in the BBA and the relationship she has with all the teachers. But again, that is felt. And so I just, it was good to see that. And then for other patrons to see that in, in action. Um, and she didn't hesitate from just everyone seeing us have a conversation out in the middle of conferences. Um, ran in, as you all do, to many parents and guardians and the support for the school board. Uh, I think what I heard probably three times was, why do you think we don't have as many people vote when it comes to school board elections? I don't know. But <laughs> so it was, it was good to hear of all the support um, that we have for our school district. And it's definitely seen with conferences. I loved what the middle school did this year. I'm, th I'm sure they've done it other years uh, with the kids doing the PowerPoints and self-evaluating and mom and dad, uh, I do need you at conferences. I don't need you at conferences, uh, whatever that might be, but getting them very involved. And you just the way they engage parents in different ways with the middle school, the intermediate school, the high school. You guys all do such a great job. So thank you again for all the efforts put forth. Um, from Teachwell, and I should have I should have brought the email, but um, Teachwell are marketing through, I believe, Lawrence and Schiller. There was a uh, ad, ad or a story about one of our pupils that was actually um, get received an award from the state. So um, I will send that out and... I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, talked about telehealth and it was um, teletherapy with a young Down syndrome um, client. So it was it was pretty cool to see that. So anyone else have any formal board reports? If not, that takes us to the um, end of our general business. And with that, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session 
per South, South Dakota Codified Law 1-25-2.1 to conduct a superintendent's evaluation. So moved. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, it is 834 and we are out of executive session. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you.